A variable admission tax or general sales tax is a form of consumption tax. From the perspective of the buyer, it is a tax on the purchase price. From that of the seller, it is a tax only on the value added to a product, material or service. From an accounting point of view, by this stage of its manufacture or distribution, the manufacturer remits to the government the difference between these two amounts and retains the rest for themselves to offset the taxes previously paid on the inputs. The value added to a product by or with a business is the sale price charged to its customer, minus the cost of materials and other taxable inputs. If that is like a sales tax in that ultimately only the end consumer is taxed, it differs from the sales tax in that with the sales tax, the tax is collected and remitted to the government only once at the point of purchase by the end consumer. With the VAT, on the other hand, collections, remittances to the government, and credits for taxes that are already paid occur each time a business in the supply chain purchases products. Overview Maurice Laure, Joint Director of the France Tax Authority, the Direction Générale des Impots, was first to introduce VAT on 10 April 1954, although German industrialist drive, Wilhelm von Siemannis proposed the concept in 1918. Initially directed at large businesses, it was extended over time to include all business sectors. In France, it is the most important source of state finance, accounting for nearly 50% of state revenues. Personal and consumers of products and services cannot recover VAT on purchases, but businesses are able to recover VAT on the products and services that they buy in order to produce further goods or services that will be sold to yet another business in the supply chain or directly to a final consumer. In this way, the total tax levied at each stage in the economic chain of supply is a constant fraction of the value added by a business. Comparison with sales tax Value-added tax avoids the cascade effect of sales tax by taxing only the value added at each stage of production. For this reason, throughout the world, VAT has been gaining favor over traditional sales taxes. In principle, VAT applies to all provisions of goods and services. VAT is assessed and collected on the value of goods or services that have been provided every time there is a transaction. The seller charges VAT to the buyer and the seller pays this VAT to the government. If, however, the purchaser is not an end user, but the goods or services purchased at cost to its business, the tax it has paid for such purchases can be deducted from the tax it charges to its customers. The government only receives the difference, in other words, it is paid tax on the gross margin of each transaction by each participant in the sales chain. In many developing countries such as India, sales tax VAT are key revenue sources as high unemployment and low per capita income render other income sources inadequate. However, there is strong opposition to this by many sub-national governments as it leads to an overall reduction in the revenue they collect as well as if some autonomy. In theory, sales tax is normally charged on end users. The VAT mechanism means that the end user tax is the same as it would be with a sales tax. The main disadvantage of VAT is the extra accounting required by those in the middle of the supply chain. This is balanced by the simplicity of not requiring a set of rules to determine who is and is not considered an end user. When the VAT system has few, if any, exemptions such as with GST in New Zealand, payment of VAT is even simpler. A general economic idea is that if sales taxes are high enough, people start engaging in widespread tax evading activity. On the other hand, total VAT rates can rise above 10% without widespread evasion because of the novel collection mechanism. However, because of its particular mechanism of collection, VAT becomes quite easily the target of specific frauds like carousel fraud which can be very expensive in terms of loss of tax incomes for states. Implementation The standard way to implement a value-added tax involves assuming a business owes some fraction on the price of the product minus all taxes, previously paid on the good. 
by the method of collection, but can be accounts-based or invoice-based. Under the invoice method of collection, each seller charges VAT rate on his output and passes the buyer a special invoice that indicates the amount of tax charged. Buyers who are subject to VAT on their own sales consider the tax on the purchase invoices as input tax and can deduct the sum from their own VAT liability. The difference between output tax and input tax is paid to the government. Under the accounts-based method, no such specific invoices are used. Instead, the tax is calculated on the value added, measured as a difference between revenues and allowable purchases. Most countries today use the invoice method, the only exception being Japan, which uses the accounts method. By the timing of collection, VAT can be either accrual or cash-based. Cash basis accounting is a very simple form of accounting. When a payment is received for the sale of goods or services, a deposit is made, and the revenue is recorded as of the date of the receipt of funds, no matter when the sale had been made. Checks are written when funds are available to pay bills and the expense is recorded as of the check date, regardless of when the expense had been incurred. The primary focus is on the amount of cash in the bank, and the secondary focus is on making sure all bills are paid. Little effort is made to match revenues to the time period in which they are earned, or to match expenses to the time period in which they are incurred. Accrual basis accounting matches revenues to the time period in which they are earned and matches expenses to the time period in which they are incurred. While it is more complex than cash basis accounting, it provides much more information about your business. The accrual basis allows you to track receivables and payables. The accrual basis allows you to match revenues to the expenses incurred in earning them, giving you more meaningful financial reports. Registration. In general, countries that have a VAT system require businesses to be registered for VAT purposes. VAT registered businesses can be natural persons or legal entities, but countries have different thresholds or regulations specifying at which turnover levels registration becomes compulsory. Businesses that are VAT registered are obliged to include VAT on goods and services that they supply to others and account for the VAT to the taxing authority. VAT registered businesses are entitled to a VAT deduction for the VAT they pay on the goods and services they acquire from other VAT registered businesses. It has been argued that the introduction of a VAT reduces the cash economy because businesses that wish to buy and sell with other VAT registered businesses must themselves be VAT registered. Examples Consider the manufacture and sale of any item, which in this case we will call a widget. In what follows, the term gross margin is used rather than profit. Profit is the remainder of what is left after paying other costs, such as rent and personnel costs. Without any tax a widget manufacturer, for example, spends $1 on raw materials and uses them to make a widget. The widget is sold wholesale to a widget retailer for $1.20, leaving a gross margin of 20 cents. The widget retailer then sells the widget to a widget consumer for $1.50, leaving a gross margin of 30 cents. With a sales tax with a 10% sales tax, the manufacturer spends $1 for the raw materials, certifying it is not a final consumer. The manufacturer charges the retailer $1.20, checking that the retailer is not a consumer, leaving the same gross margin of 20 cents. The retailer charges the consumer $1.50 plus equals $1.65 and pays the government 15 cents, leaving the gross margin of 30 cents. So the consumer has paid 10% extra, compared to the no taxation scheme, and the government has collected this amount in taxation. The retailers have not paid any tax directly, but the retailer has to do the paperwork in order to correctly pass on to the government the sales tax it has collected. Suppliers and manufacturers only have the administrative burden of supplying correct certifications and checking that their customers are not consumers. A large exception to this state of affairs is online sales. 
Typically if the online retail firm has no nexus in the state where the merchandise will be delivered, no obligation is imposed upon the retailer to collect sales taxes from out-of-state purchases. Generally, state law requires that the purchaser report such purchases to the state taxing authority and pay the use tax, which compensates for the sales tax that is not paid by the retailer. It is fair to say that many citizens are unaware of this obligation and that states make little effort to raise that awareness or provide a reasonably easy way of complying with the obligation, with a value-added tax with a 10% VAT. The manufacturer spends equals $1.10 for the raw materials, and the seller of the raw materials pays the government 10 cents. The manufacturer charges the retailer equals $1.32 and pays the government equals 2 cents, leaving the same gross margin of equals 20 cents. The retailer charges the consumer equals $1.65 and pays the government equals 3 cents, leaving the same gross margin of equals 30 cents. The manufacturer and retailer realize less gross margin from a percentage perspective. Note that the tax is paid by both the manufacturer and the retailer to the government are 10% of the values added by their respective business. Practices times 10% equals 2 cents. With VAT, the consumer has paid, and the government received, the same dollar amount as with the sales tax. The businesses have not incurred any tax themselves. Their obligation is limited to assuming the necessary paperwork in order to pass on to the government the difference between what they collect in VAT, and what they spend in VAT. However, they are freed from any obligation to request certifications from purchasers who are not end-users, and of providing such certifications to their suppliers. On the other hand, they incur increased accounting costs for collecting the tax, which are not reimbursed by the taxing authority. For example, wholesale companies now have to hire staff and accountants to handle the VAT paperwork which would not be required if they were collecting sales tax instead. If you calculate the added overhead required to collect VAT, businesses collecting VAT have less profits overall than businesses collecting sales tax. The advantage of the VAT system over the sales tax system is that under sales tax, the seller has no incentive to disbelieve a purchaser who says it is not a final user. That is to say the payer of the tax has no incentive to collect the tax. Under VAT, all sellers collect tax and pay it to the government. A purchaser has an incentive to deduct input VAT, but must prove it has the right to do so, which is usually achieved by holding an invoice quoting the VAT paid on the purchase and indicating the VAT registration number of the supplier. Limitations to the examples in the above examples we assume that the same number of widgets were made and sold both before and after the introduction of the tax. This is not true in real life. The supply and demand economic model suggests that any tax raises the cost of transaction for someone, whether it is the seller or purchaser. In raising the cost, either the demand curve shifts leftward, or the supply curve shifts upward. The two are functionally equivalent. Consequently, the quantity of a good purchased decreases and, or the price for which it is sold increases. This shift in supply and demand is not incorporated into the above example. For simplicity and because these effects are different for every type of good, the above example assumes the tax is non-distortionary. Limitations of VAT A VAT, like most taxes, distorts what would have happened without it. Because the price for someone rises, the quantity of goods traded decreases. Correspondingly, some people are worse off by more than the government is made better off by tax income. That is, more is lost due to supply and demand shifts than is gained in tax. This is known as a deadweight loss. If the income lost by the economy is greater than the government's income, the tax is inefficient. It must be noted that a VAT and a non-VAT has the same implications on the microeconomic model. The entire amount of the government's income may not be a deadweight drag. If the tax revenue is used for productive spending or has positive externalities, in other words, 
governments may do more than simply consume the tax income. While distortions occur, consumption taxes like VAT are often considered superior because they distort incentives to invest save and work less than most other types of taxation. In other words, a VAT discourages consumption rather than production. In the diagram on the right, dead weight loss. The area of the triangle formed by the tax income box, the original supply curve, and the demand curve. Government's tax income. The gray rectangle that says, tax revenue, total consumer surplus after the shift. The green area total producer surplus after the shift, the yellow area, imports and exports. Being a consumption tax, VAT is usually used as a replacement for sales tax. Ultimately, it taxes the same people and businesses the same amounts of money, despite its internal mechanism being different. There is a significant difference between VAT and sales tax for goods that are imported and exported. VAT is charged for a commodity that is exported while sales tax is not. Sales tax is paid for the full price of the imported commodity while VAT is expected to be charged only for value added to this commodity by the importer and the reseller. This means that, without special measures, goods will be taxed twice if they are exported from one country that does have VAT to another country that has sales tax instead. Vice versa, goods that are imported from a VAT-free country into another country with VAT will result in no sales tax and only a fraction of the usual VAT. There are also significant differences in taxation for goods that are being imported, exported between countries with different systems or rates of VAT. Sales tax does not have those problems. It is charged in the same way for both imported and domestic goods, and it is never charged twice. To fix this problem, nearly all countries that use VAT use special rules for imported and exported goods. All imported goods are charged VAT tax for their full price when they are sold for the first time. All exported goods are exempted from any VAT payments. For these reasons VAT on imports and VAT rebates on exports form a common practice approved by the World Trade Organization. Example consider a Ford car that cost $25,000 to produce in the USA and an Opel car that cost $25,000 to produce in Germany. Both prices are shown with all taxes imposed on manufacturers of these cars, including social taxes, income taxes, etc., but without taxes imposed on consumers, that is, sales tax in USA and VAT in Germany, without a special modification related to export, import. Customer prices will be no VAT Opel prices appear to be inherently higher than Ford ones. This way, prices are initially equal, but become different after all the additional VAT taxes and rebates described below. Such an approach does not take into account the simple fact that Opel prices in the table above always include VAT while Ford prices never include it. That's exactly why additional adjustments are made in VAT taxation. One may try to object that this simply means that Germany has generally higher taxes but, in fact, this is not the case for consumer taxes. Consider a hypothetical situation where consumer tax remains exactly the same in Germany as in the example above, but now it is collected as 20% sales tax. The amount of tax is clearly different in the USA and Germany, but the skew in taxes between Opel and Ford has gone. Now everything is taxed in same way. Opel is not taxed twice, and Ford is taxed when its cars are imported to Germany. Note that the price of Opel cars in Germany is the same for both examples. Rebating VAT on imports allows the same retail prices and customer taxation without abandoning VAT. Instead, the seller of imported Fords in Germany is charged 20% VAT for the whole price of Fords sold, and the exporter of Opals is rebated $5,000 out of $30,000 he spent to buy each.